Hi guys, so I want to go over the live streaming and recording options based on the information that we have at this point in time. For live streaming and or recording, we need these requirements. We need a backdrop, we need lights, we need some kind of audio system, whether it's a mic with an interface or a mic going through the mixer, etc. For live streaming, you need an internet connection. For recording, obviously, you don't need it. As far as the internet connection, you need at least three megabits per second to be able to stream successfully. Let's go over our live streaming options. We have four options, software encoder, hardware encoder, IP camera, or a pro camera with a built-in RTMP and WebRTC. So let's talk about our first option, which is software encoder. For software encoder, you need a high power desktop. Um, I recommend i7 quad at least. The reason for this is that um, encoding takes quite a bit of CPU processing. So you need a high power desktop to be able to do that. As far as software encoder is concerned, we standardize on Wirecast. But there are other options that are out there. Um, there's vMix and OBS, just to name a few. Now, as far as camera is concerned, uh, you can use a HDMI camera or, a, or even an SDI camera. Um, but you do need a capture card. So to be able to capture the HDMI or SDI camera. Now, you could also use a USB camera through a USB port or an IP camera uh, you could bring that in to Wirecast to be able to capture that. Now for audio input, uh, you can use the built-in mic input of the desktop or if the desktop has an I.O. card, you could use that or you could use an external USB audio interface. Now the software encoder gives you the capability to do local recording so you could record right on the desktop while you're streaming at the same time and it also gives you to the ability to play and stream uh, media files such as uh, video files or even still pictures so with the software encoder this option gives you the most flexibility and the most and it's the most powerful option out there using a software encoder it gives you the ability to Pull in multiple cameras if you have multiple capture cards. Um, you could play media files and do a recording as well. Let's talk about option two, which is the hardware encoder. So hardware encoder is just a piece of equipment that does nothing else but encode and stream directly to a streaming server. There are multiple options that are out there, multiple vendors. There's Matrox, there's AJA, Live view solo, just to name a few. One thing about hardware encoders, they're very, very simple to operate. They usually have just two buttons. One is for streaming and the other one is for recording. So it's really, really simple to operate. You do need an HDMI camera. You don't need a capture card because the hardware encoder has a capture card that's already built in. As far as audio input, you can use a 3.5 millimeter audio input into it coming from your audio system. Now for local recording, you can use the USB port. So you, all you need to do is just plug in a thumb drive or a hard drive to the USB port and then hit the record button. Now the downside to using a hardware encoder is that you cannot stream media files but there is a workaround what you do is uh, on the hdmi input you put uh, hdmi seamless switch one source would be the camera and the other source would be some desktop or laptop that's playing the media file so you could switch between the two sources as long as it's a seamless switch so that's the hardware encoder and that's the second option so let's talk about our third option, which is an IP camera or a pro camera with a built-in RTMP. So this device connects directly to the live streaming server. Obviously, you don't need a camera or a capture card because the, the device is already a camera. 
And as far as recording is concerned, if it has HDMI output, you should be able to connect an external device to be able to do the recording. Uh, some of the pro cameras have media, so you could plug in an SD card or some kind of media card to be able to record a local recording. Now, as far as the audio input, um, some of these uh, IP cameras have a 3.5 millimeter audio input, and some of the pro cameras actually have uh, XLR inputs. And then the downside to this is that you can't stream a media file using an IP camera and there's no workaround at all whatsoever. So that's uh, our third option on using IP or Pro camera with a built-in RTMP. Let's talk about our fourth option which is WebRTC. WebRTC is a fairly new technology. RTC means real-time communication and it's a browser-to-browser -browser communication. So you need a desktop or a laptop you need Google Chrome as well. Now as far as camera is concerned you can use HDMI camera or a USB camera. If you're going to use the HDMI camera you need a capture card. With WebRTC local recording is quite limited because it's fairly new technology. Now as far as audio is concerned you can use the mic input or the input of the audio card or the input of the audio USB interface. And then one thing that the WebRTC cannot do is stream media files. So those are our four options, uh, software encoder, hardware encoder, IP or pro camera with a built-in RTMP, and WebRTC. Now the software encoder gives you the most flexibility and the most powerful option that we have out there, but it's also the most expensive because you need the desktop, you need the uh, camera, and all those things. Now, hardware encoder is uh, another option that's very, very simple to use, uh, but it does have limitations. You can't play media files, but there is a workaround. Now, the third option is this IP or Pro camera with a built-in RTMP. It's also a very, very simple setup, but you cannot play media files at all. And WebRTC is a fairly new technology that hasn't been tested yet, so I would stay away from that option at this point in time. So let's talk about our recording options. Uh, one is to use a software encoder. Number two is to use a hardware encoder. Number three is to use the iOS device. So if you're going to use a software encoder as option one, you need a desktop or a laptop. Uh, it doesn't need to be as powerful as a live streaming computer, but it's still doing encoding. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you need the Wirecast, obviously, or OBS, or any other recording software that works on that desktop. You need HDMI camera. You could also use a USB camera or an IP camera. You bring that in into Wirecast. And then if you're going to use an HDMI camera, you need a capture card. As far as audio is concerned, you can use a mic input or the input on the audio card or, or you can use an external USB interface. So that's option one. Option two to record it would be using a hardware encoder. Now you need an HDMI camera to plug it into uh, the hardware encoder. As far as audio is concerned, you have to bring in the audio from an external um, system audio system like a mixer or something like that and you bring it into the 3.5 millimeter, millimeter stereo input of the hardware encoder and you could record locally to a USB stick or a hard drive on the USB port of the hardware encoder and all you need to do is just hit that record button and finally the third option is the iOS device uh, so iOS device could be um, iPod, iPad iPhone as a built-in camera and you use the app to be able to record it um, the audio input you can bring that in via a USB port and you need some kind of tripod mount to be able to connect it to and mount it to the tripod so looking at all the three options uh, software encoder is the most expensive option for recording uh, hardware encoder is very simple to use an iOS device is probably the most affordable option that we have now in terms of just recording. So those are the three options.
software encoder, hardware encoder, or iOS device. So those are our live streaming and recording options. So if you have any questions, just let me know.